Good morning. Uh, we're going to look at Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20 this morning. And, and Jesus is again by the sea, it says, and, and he began to teach again beside the sea. And a very large crowd was there, and he got into a boat and sat in the boat out on the sea. And, you know, in, in, in a way, I can understand that. You know, the, the shoreline was flat and level, and if Jesus got into a boat and went out, from shore just a little ways maybe people would be able to see him better but also you know voices carry over the water and so maybe that that helped more people to be able to hear but uh he was teaching and and he taught in parables a lot and a parable is a story and uh, they may be based on some fact but the parables are not always true fact i mean this is it's like I don't want to compare them completely to Aesop's fables, but even with Aesop's fables, you know, a lot of those have some meaning in them, a lesson to be learned that way. And Jesus' parables definitely have lessons for us to learn. And the parable Jesus uses in this uh, uh, gospel reading from Mark 4 is the parable of the sower. And it's one we're very familiar with. The sower went out and he scattered seed, and he scattered it on the path, on the rocky soil, in soil that was overgrown with weeds, and on fertile soil. And, and he talks about those four different types of soil and, and what happened to the seed that, that landed there. On the path, you know, the birds came and ate it up. On the rocky soil, it grew, grew a little bit, and then it, it ran out of moisture and, and nutrition and withered up and died. And in the, in the Weedy soil, it, it sprouted, but you know, the weeds, I mean, weeds have a terrible propensity uh, to, to grow faster than anything else and to choke out anything that, that should be desirable. And so that's what happened to that seed, but there was also seed on good ground. And it, it grew and it yielded. And, and you know, when they got back together, the, when they got to just the disciples and Jesus, you know, they said, well, why do you teach in parables? You know, and Jesus said, well, you know, not everybody's going to hear and understand. And, and that's the way it's going to be. You know, and, you know, God's word you know, comes out to us. And God, God's very indiscriminate. I mean, he, his word is for everybody in all situations, for everybody. And, and I think when Jesus compares, you know, the word of God to the seed being sown, I think he's very accurate in that. And if we go back to Isaiah uh, chapter 55, verse 11, I'm gonna, I'll read it for you. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I purpose, and it will succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So God says, you know, that, that my word will accomplish what, what I want it to, and it will go out. It won't come back to me empty. And in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 5 through 9, you know, Paul asks, well, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? You know, and all these things, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. And, and I think that's an important thing for us to remember that, you know, um, most of us are here in rural North Dakota or uh, familiar with farming. And we know that, you know, the seed gets planted in the ground. And once the farmer puts that seed in the ground, I mean, we just got to wait for the seed to absorb enough moisture so that it sprouts and grows and, and that there are nutrients there. And once that seed is in the ground, uh, we just wait until it sprouts and it comes up. And once it comes up, then we can add fertilizer, we can, we can uh, control weeds, we can do a lot of things. But that initial growth is up to God. And, and I think that's important for us to remember. Um, I remember back in, uh, oh, I don't know, 1999 or 2000 or 2000, whatever that was after. It was probably early 2002. My, my first meeting with the Synod Candidacy Committee in my journey to become an ordained pastor, uh, one of the people asked me, they knew that I farmed, and they asked me, well, what, what similarities do you see between farming and preaching, you know, being a pastor? 
And this parable came to my mind as, you know, the sower going out to sow the seed. And that's, you know, as a farmer does that, you know, we trust in, in God's growth and in a lot of God's timing. And as a pastor, as one who shares God's word, as a parent with his child or her child, we, we teach them. But we can't force it. We teach and we encourage. and So we plant the seed of faith in them. And then we can, we can nurture it through Sunday school, through worship, through prayer, through reading the Bible with them, through, through stories of God and, and through all of that. But God's the one that really is, is promoting the growth and leading and guiding in so many ways. And so, you know, we are, um, we're the ones that, that do the work in, in so many ways. I mean, we, we I, I don't know, I should say we do the work. We, we initiate the planting of the seed and then God does the work. God provides the growth and, and all of that. And, and in this, I want to go back to in, in Jesus' day, you know, the, the sower went out to sow a seed and he would have a seed pouch, you know, around his, around his waist and he would take the seed in his hand and he would scatter it by hand. And, and they weren't quite maybe as indiscriminate in where they planted seed as Jesus made it sound here. But, I mean, they wouldn't intentionally go and, and scatter seed on the path, on the, on the road. They wouldn't intentionally scatter a lot of seed in a weedy spot. I mean, nor would they intentionally scatter a lot of seed on the rocky ground where they knew it wouldn't grow. I mean, they would concentrate on the ground that had been prepared, the ground that they knew was good ground. But Jesus is using this parable as an example for us that, that God's word is for everybody. And that sometimes, you know, that seed that falls on the road, that, you know, most of it may seem that it gets eaten up by the birds and, and different things that way. But, you know, maybe there's a kernel or two left there that, that at some point will take root and will do some good. And it's the same with the rocky soil and the weedy soil. I mean... The, you know, the rocky soil, it's the people that they, they hear it, they, they get real faithful, and then, oh, life gets tough, and they quit. Or the weedy soil, you know, they, they get excited, and then all of the cares and concerns of life um, take precedence over it. But the reality is, is that when that seed is planted, some of those roots can run deep. Some of those seeds can seem to be remain buried for a long time. You know, in our in our soils, you know, we go out and... And uh, in the spring, we, we, we dig the soil or we plow the soil or in the fall, you know, sometimes you know, we don't do a lot of plowing anymore, but we, we dig the fields. And after you dig the field, after the harvest, what happens? There's new growth out there because there are seeds in the ground and there are, you know, it's there. Some of those seeds can remain viable in the ground for 15 or 20 years or we don't know how long some of that seed can remain viable there. And so I think part of, Part of this parable that Jesus is, is sharing with us is a reminder to us that when we plant the seed, that we should be indiscriminate with it, that we should let everybody hear and everybody know because the word of God is for everybody. We don't know how deep some of those roots may be or how deep some of those roots may be hidden or how, how long this seed that we plant in our youth, in our children, in our Sunday school kids, how long that seed may, may just sit there before it starts to grow. But we trust that God's word will accomplish its purpose. And we trust that, that when God's word impacts someone, that, that it can be life-changing. And you know, Jesus goes on, he explains the parable, you know, he says, you know, the... The, the good, the soil, the stuff that falls on good soil could be 30 bushels or 60 bushels or 100 bushels. I mean, and when we go out and plant our fields today, I mean, say 50 years ago when we went out with our, with our drills to plant the crop, I mean, the, the exact same number of seed was planted, I mean, pretty uniformly, supposedly. Today's machinery with the, with the modern computer control access and with the mapping of soil types and everything, as, as the farmers go across the field, their drill can automatically increase the fertilizer, decrease the fertilizer, increase the seed, decrease the seed. The, the, the computer 
knows exactly what type of soil they're on because of all the mapping and all of the inputs. And so they can customize and try to utilize and optimize to get the very best yield from all of the ground, depending on how much seed and how much fertilizer is placed out there. But God's word to us is to share the word of God with everybody. Don't hold it back. Just, I mean, like that sower that went out in this parable of Jesus. He was just flinging seed all over. Some people may not seem to hear. Some people may seem to ignore it. Some people may be excited and then fall away. And some are faithful, you know, from day one. But that doesn't make any difference in God's love for us because God loves each and every one and God wants each and every one of us to hear his word and to grow in faith. And so I truly, I truly believe that, you know, it, it's our task as, as people of God to spread the word, to share the word, to encourage others in their faith. But it isn't our job to ram it down somebody's throat. It's our job to teach, to encourage, to, you know, but then to let God provide the growth and, and to rejoice, to rejoice when the seed sprouts and grows. And may God's seed grow within you today.